Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing Limassons. A Limasson is a graph that is drawn on the polar grid. The general equation for a Limasson is r equals a plus or minus b sine theta, or r equals a plus or minus b cosine theta. The ratio of a to b is going to change the shape of our graph. So let's start by looking at how the ratio of a or b to b affects here I've drawn a um, limousin that has an inner loop. And at this point, a is 2 and b is 4. Remember, you have your general equation here. Our a is 2, our b is 4, and we're using cosine graph with a plus sign in between. So when we have um, the ratio of a to b, where it's going to be less than 1, or in other words, a is less than b, you're going to have an inner loop. So let's go ahead and change our value of b and see what happens. As we increase the value of b, notice that the inner loop and the outer loop are both growing. But as we shrink our value of b, what you should notice is that the inner loop is getting really small to the point where it's going to disappear. And it's going to actually disappear when we have a ratio of a to b that they're equal. So we've got about 2 for each one of those. So now you just have um, a point here um, where the graph is coming into the pole instead of a loop there. And that's going to cause our graph to look more like a heart shape, and we call it a cardioid. So that's again going to be where A equals B. Now let's go ahead and continue to make B smaller. And now we have a ratio of A over B that's between 1 and 2. And this one is called a dimpled limousin. Looks like a little dimple there. And as we continue to make B smaller, when our ratio of a over b becomes greater than or equal to 2, we're going to have what we call a convex limousin. And you can see with the convex limousin that one side is flatter than the other. We can continue to make b smaller and smaller. And what you should notice is that it's still going to be a convex limousin, but it gets a little bit more difficult to see that one side is flatter than the other. Let's go back to our inner loop for a minute. And when we have our inner loop, um, you can pretty easily see some relationships here. When you have the a values 2, that's where your graph is crossing this line theta equal pi over 2, or the vertical axis, at 2, when you plug in um, the value of um, pi over 2, or when you plug in the value of 3 pi over 2. So let's go ahead and change our a value for a second so you can see how that works. Let's make a be 1 kind of go down here as close as we can to 1. And you can see now your graph is crossing the axis at 1. If you increase your value of A, you can see that it's going to move that um, point that it's crossing the horse, a vertical axis, and it's going to be closer to 3 now. So you can see what A does, and you can see what B does to your graph. OK, let's focus in on the inner loop graph for now. Remember that with the inner loop graph, your a value is less than b. Or you could say that a divided by b is less than 1, either way. If you have a positive sign in between a and b, and you have a sine graph, then the majority of your graph is going to be above the uh, polar axis. And if you have a minus sign in between, the majority of your graph is going to be below the polar axis. All right, and now we also want to look at some symmetry of the graph. You should notice that these have symmetry with the line theta equals pi over 2. But let's go ahead and do our symmetry test for that. So one of our symmetry tests is to replace theta with pi minus theta. And the sine of pi minus theta is the same as sine of theta. So we, that shows that it does um, have symmetry to line theta equals pi over 2 for all of these graphs that involve sine. The other way to do that is to use the cosine graph. Now notice that with the cosine graph, the symmetry is with respect to the polar axis. And um, again, if we have a positive sign in between A and B, the majority of our graph is going to be on the positive side, and this time on the positive side of theta equal pi over 2. With the minus sign, the majority of the graph is going to be to the left. So let's go ahead and test for the symmetry to the polar axis. With our polar axis symmetry test, we replace theta with negative theta. And since the cosine of theta is equal to the cosine of negative theta, that's going to be true for all of these graphs. So 
all the cosine graphs are going to have symmetry with respect to the polar axis. Let's go ahead and try to graph one of these in this arm. We have the equation 1 plus 3 cosine theta. In this case, a is 1 and b is 3. So our ratio of a to b is 1 over 3, which is less than 1. So this is going to be a lemma song with an inner loop. And because we're using cosine, it's going to have symmetry with respect to the polar axis. So we're going to plot a few points and then use symmetry to finish the graph. So let's say that we plugged in 0 for cosine of, um, into the theta for cosine theta. It's going to give us a 1. So we end up with 4 for our r value. Let's plug in pi over 6 for theta. So we have the cosine of pi over 6. And that's going to give us square root of 3 over 2. Then multiply by 3, add 1, and then I put it together as one fraction. So we have 2 plus 3 squared, so 3 over 2. Just an estimate. But you could start plotting these as we go along as well. Suppose that we plugged in pi over 3. So we have 1 plus 3 times the cosine of pi over 3. And the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So we have 1 plus 3 halves, or 5 halves. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so we end up with 1. And let's plug in pi over 6. We have 3 times the cosine of pi, 5 pi over 6. And the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative square root of 3 over 2. So again, simplify and add them together, put it together as one fraction. And I'm just giving exact answers here, but when you go to graph it, you might want to um, estimate them. Let's try plugging in pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1, so we have 1 minus 3, which gives us negative 2. Okay, so our next step is to go ahead and plot these points. So I did that here, and um, just by plotting these few points, you can see that it kind of has a snail shape to it. And that's why they're called limasons, because limason um, can be translated to be snail. But of course, I've only drawn half the graph because I only plotted points, um, you know, for these angles um, so far. So what we want to do after that is go ahead and flip this over the polar axis using our symmetry to find the rest of the graph. And I also went ahead and plotted some more points just to um, complete the graph. Um, but you can go ahead and do that as well. And I also put directional signs here. So you can see we're starting off at 0 here at um, the ordered pair 4, 0, and we're going around in a counterclockwise direction, following the loop this way and back around. And sometimes that helps, especially if you're working with calculus and you want to start finding the um, derivatives of this graph. Okay, the next one that we're going to talk about is the cardioid, which is the heart-shaped graph. And using sign for these, um, again, they're going to have symmetry with respect to line theta equals pi over 2. We already showed that. Um, so you can see that the majority of the graph is going to be above the polar axis um, if there's a positive sign in between them, and below the polar axis if there's a minus sign in between them. And with the cosine graph, you're going to have um, the majority of the graph to the positive side if there's a plus sign in between A and B, and the majority of the graph to the left if A and B have a minus sign in between them. Again, with these graphs with the cosine, you're going to have symmetry with respect to the polar axis. And in this case, um, because we're looking at the cardioid, that's where A and B are exactly the same. Or you could say the ratio of A to B is 1. Okay, so let's try to graph one. Now, in this case, um, because we already kind of know what the graph looks like, I'm just going to plot some points. So I'm going to plug in a 0 for the sine. And since the sine of 0 is 0, we end up with 2. Then I'm going to plug in pi over 2, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so 2 minus 2 gave me 0. And then we have the sine of pi, 2 minus um, 0 gives me um, 2. Remember, the sine of pi is 0. And then we're going to plug in uh, 3 pi over 2, so the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so I have 2 minus negative 2, or positive 4. Then we're just going to go ahead and plot those on our cardioid. Now remember we said before when we were looking at the graphs that the A value is going to hit the axis. So you can see that we have twos on our axis here. And um, so if you knew that already, you wouldn't even have to plot those. And you know that you're going to have a point on the pole for this graph. 
and um, then find this one here um, by plugging in 3 pi over 2. The next one that we're going to talk about is the dimple in the song. And um, again, when you have a sine graph, you're going to have symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2. And for these, your A over B ratio is going to be between 1 and 2. And for the cosine, um, they're going to open to the left or to the right. And you're going to um, have symmetry with respect to the polar axis. Now we have this one, we have 3 minus 2 cosine theta, so um, A is 3 and B is 2, so the ratio of A over B is between 1 and 2, so we have a dimpled on. And again, we're just going to plug in some points. So I started off with 0, so um, 3 minus 2 gave me 1, cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so we ended up with 3. Cosine of pi. Um, cosine of pi is negative 1, so it's 3 minus negative 2, or positive 5. And the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so we're back to 3 again. Okay, so uh, again, um, our A value is hitting um, the axis, this time the vertical axis at 3. At, um, 3 for pi, and pi over 2, and 3 for 3 pi over 2. So you have the majority of your graph to the left. And you have that point at 5, 4, pi. The next one is the convex lemma song, uh, where one side is flatter than the other. And these, um, for the sine graphs, will have symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2. And for the cosine graph, they're going to have symmetry with respect to the polar axis. Remember, your A over B ratio is going to be greater than or equal to 2. So let's take a look at one of those. In this case, we have 4 plus 2 sine theta. So our ratio of A over B is 4 over 2, or positive 2. So that's greater than or equal to 2. So we have a convex lemma sum. And again, since we already know what it looks like, and we know our A values are going to hit the um, polar axis in this case because it's a sine graph, you're going to have those points at 4. But we can go ahead and plug in values for our angle measure. Plugging in a 0 for the angle measure, we get our 4. 4 value for our radius. Plugging in pi over 2, we got 6. So that's going to be on your line theta equals pi over 2. And um, plugging in pi, we got out 4. And then plugging in 3 pi over 2, we got 2. So again, just finding those four points at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2 should um, help you complete your graph for any of these lemma songs. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.